Hello Thinksters, welcome to another blog on graph search algorithms. This time we will learn about a technique called backtracking on an example of a very popular puzzle game, Sudoku. Backtracking is a way to form an algorithm to look for a solution in a depth-first search approach. It is applicable to a very specific class of problems uh, called uh, constraining satisfaction problems. An algorithm implements backtracking by incrementally adding uh, the candidate elements. It actually descends along the graph of possible partial configurations uh, with respect to a given set of constraints or rules, forming a partial candidate configuration. The algorithm proceeds until it reaches a configuration from which it cannot proceed any further without breaking the rules. In that case, the algorithm backtracks, climbs up the graph of possible configurations and does so until it reaches the next valid candidate partial solution. Here we have an example of a starting configuration and now we'll look at how the algorithm progresses, uh, i.e. how it looks for a final solution. The first possible uh, partial candidate solution is the one where the algorithm puts uh, number one in the first position. You can see it right here. And uh, by doing so, uh, in the next step, the algorithm would fill uh, the cell next to the number two. That's the one right here. I, it would make it number three. Uh, the next thing the algorithm could do while uh, starting or later while it backtracks all the way uh, to this first configuration, you'll get a better notion of what I'm talking about uh, once I show you how the algorithm works, is uh, it could place a different value at uh, at this position and instead of 1 it can put a value number 6. Why number 6? Because after 1 we already have values 2, 3 and 4. Here we cannot put 5 because we have number 5, value 5 in this column and in this row we don't have either 5 or 6, so the 6 is the next possible value. After that, uh, another possible configuration on this first level would be value 6 or number 6. After that, we would have a possible configuration starting with uh, value 8 or number 8, and this is exactly where, here on this first level, we would exhaust all possible configurations because uh, we cannot have value 9 in this uh, position because we already have 9 in this row. Okay, so let's go on uh, and uh, let's take a look how the algorithm really works. We are starting here in the first position and we will be putting number 1 or value 1 in this cell. The next cell or next position will be the one here next to number 2. This one. And the only possible value, the lowest possible value actually because we are going incrementally, the algorithm works incrementally and tries to fill uh, every position in a certain order. The next possible value is value number 5. The same goes with 6 here because we don't have 6 either in this block or this column or this row. And then we have 8, 3, 4, 7 and now we continue in the following row with 6 and now that we got to value 9 
we will find ourselves in a special uh, situation. Here we have an illustration of uh, how we actually descend. This is an imaginary graph. I mean, we follow its logic, but uh, we don't really have this graph implemented in memory, but uh, we do it by calculating uh, its vertices. Every this vertex is actually one uh, configuration, one partial candidate uh, one partial solution candidate of this board. Uh, the next step we should do is uh, fill this position, but now we have a problem. We cannot put any of uh, any of the leftover values because we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then in the same row seven, eight. We cannot put either 7 or 8, which are actually the missing values in this block. And so, now what happens? Now the algorithm uh, becomes aware that it should backtrack, and it actually goes back as far as needed to, to be able to put another valid value in a certain position. Here we have another question mark, meaning that the uh, next wa value, the next possible value is not 9. We have already uh, had 9 in this position. It cannot be 7, it cannot be 8. And what we do, we backtrack one more time. And we also follow what we're doing on this uh, graph. And now, the next possible value we can put in this question mark position is value number 9. And now that we have value number 9, we can proceed and search for the next value. This would be value number 6, but now, once again, we found ourselves in a position actually the algorithm found itself in a position where it cannot place either 7 nor 8 in uh, this position. What happens next is the algorithm backtracks on and on until it reaches a stable, valid, partial uh, solution candidate or a candidate for a, a configuration candidate for a solution. Uh, we won't be going through all the steps because after additional 321,801 iterations it would take a lot of time for us to do this by hand we reach the solution by backtracking where the final solution looks like this we have 7, 1, 3, etc, etc. If you remember or if you check what uh, we said in the beginning of this video, you will find that uh, the initial configuration of this board, starting with value number 7 in, uh, in this first position, was actually our third branch. We had four branches on the first level of our graph and this was the third one. So after the algorithm backtracked many times, we had to do it many times because we have all these iterations prior to finding the solution. Once it found that uh, position number seven, uh, that this position, the first position contains value number seven, it started going towards the solution. Uh, one major point to to uh, emphasize here is that the algorithm probably backtracked many more times, but it never reached uh, with, with this backtracking all the way to the position in the cell. It probably backtracked to some uh, deeper levels. Anyways, uh, please check the algorithm. Uh, you also have an option, you can see it in the article, uh, you have the option to print 
every possible configuration while the algorithm works you can precisely follow what it does how it does uh, these iterations until it reaches the solution and this is actually more or less on uh, this topic if I didn't mention something I hope you be you'll be able to find it in the article uh, you also have the entire implementation there this time we didn't use uh, the graph class because this is a very simple implementation anyways I hope uh, you managed to get a feeling of uh, what backtracking is. I hope, as always, that you had some fun along the way, that you managed to learn something new. And uh, until the next time, bye-bye.